Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. I just want to say thank God for each and every one of you this day. Amen. And thank God for making this day and allowing us in it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I am so excited to be here today. You have no idea what your prayers are doing. God is moving. He's moving in this ministry in a powerful way, a powerful way, and in each and every one of your lives. Keep praying. It's working. Miracles happening everywhere. People being set free all around this world. Deliverance going forth. Healing going forth. Let's keep it up, y'all. This is... <laughs> This is wonderful. Amen. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to all of you on YouTube. Thank you for following. God bless each and every one of you. All of you on Facebook. My Facebook family, friends, relatives, and loved ones. It's so good to see you here today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't God good? I mean, it's almost overwhelming the speed and the miracles that he's performing each and every day and has been since we started doing this. And it's like, wow, go Lord, go Lord. Amen. But if you're on YouTube, I'm just so excited. See, y'all going to make me preach up in here, and I'm trying not to preach, okay? I just wanted to bring a word and say hi and pray for y'all. But see, y'all, don't look at me like that. Amen. We get excited. We'll get to preaching. Amen. Glory, glory, <laughs> glory. If you're on YouTube and you want to reach out to me, personal prayer, you just want to talk, whatever, Come over to my Facebook page, Rev Eddie Wiggins, Rev Eddie, one word, no period, no space, Rev Eddie Wiggins on Facebook. Message me, amen, and we'll chat it out, we'll talk it out, we'll cry it out, we'll pray it out, but just know this, God <laughs> is going to work it out, amen. We're reaching out into this world and we're finding so many lost, so many broken, so many hurting, so many people in dark places, so many addicted to things they can't get off of. It's okay. It's a broken world. But I know the mender and he's here with me right now. And just know in your heart that your deliverance is at hand, your healing is at hand right now. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just too, I'm too excited to podcast right now. I was just jumping around and praising God and playing my gospel music. You notice I keep putting those songs up. These are from my library. I, I'm enjoying the Lord. And it's through our praise that you back that enemy off. You think praise isn't a weapon? Come on now. Oh, yeah. Praise is a powerful weapon. Get that music on that you like and dance before the Lord. The Bible says that our praises choke the enemy's neck. You want to back him off of you? You want to stop hearing those voices? Play some gospel music. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a powerful weapon. He's firing his fiery darts over the fence trying to attack you. You got a hedge of protection and a wall of fire he can't get by. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to me right now. You'd be dead. I'd be dead. Amen? But when you praise, you launch spiritual missiles back into the enemy's camp. That puts him on the run. He don't want to hear you praising God. 
uh-uh. That's the last thing he wants to hear. You see? Use these weapons that the Lord has given us. Your prayers, they're working, y'all. Let's keep praying. We're about to get to our prayer list. Let's keep praying for each other. We're praying for each and every one of you out there every day in our Bible studies, in our little prayer sessions. Amen. And we just ask that you keep us lifted up in prayer because we're doing what we're doing. The enemy's coming hard against us, but that's how we know we're on the right track. Amen. I've always said, if you wonder if your walk is tight with the Lord, <laughs> ask the devil. If he's throwing everything at you but the kitchen sink, you know you on the right track. You know your walk is tight. Amen? <laughs> All right. So I just want to give a shout out to my favorite little island. Amen? I can't wait to come back. I want to hit them beaches. We were hitting so many churches. Amen? We missed the beach, but that's okay. Because next time I come, I want to hit that beach. And I just want to get alone with the Lord on the island of Mindanao. And I just want to say thank you, God, for this beautiful place that you've created and all these beautiful, beautiful people of yours so precious to your heart on this island of Mindanao. Hey, Dipalog City, how are you? So good. Good for you to be tuning in through Joe Ryan and Mix FM as he broadcasts this word all through the town of Polanco and Dipalog City and the villages and cities surrounding Dipalog. Amen. He's still looking for that transmitter. If you drive by a, a, a radio station, stop. They may have just the transmitter that he wants in a closet they're not even using anymore. Look on my page, scroll down. It's a 1,500 or 2,000 watt FM uh, transmitter we're looking for. Amen. And I know that the Lord's going to make a way for us to get Joe Ryan in full power because he's spreading this word. Thank you, Joe. Thank you to everybody at your radio station and all their ministries and all that they're doing. Now, I hear, I hear through the grapevine. Joe Ryan whispered in my ear. He said, Pastor Neal is coming in June. You don't have long, and boy, are you going to be blessed. Amen. I just love Pastor Neal and uh, her ministry. Amen. I love her heart. She loves the Lord. She loves the Word. She loves the kids. She got an orphanage with almost 30 kids in there. Amen. And uh, if you've got any extra, Send it her way. Kids stay hungry. They need clothes. They need all types of things. Amen. If you've got extra, find Joe Ryan. He'll get in touch with uh, Pastor Neely, and you can bless that ministry of hers. She's looking for hollow bricks. Come on now. You drive by them every day. Grab a few of those hollow bricks. Put them aside for her. Call Mix FM and let them know you got some bricks, bags of cement. Amen so she can finish up this church and continue to be a blessing. Amen. Now, if you're in a business over there in Dipalog or anywhere in those areas, Polanco, and you've got a service or a product you're trying to sell, now's the time. Contact Joe Ryan at Mix FM. He's taking on new clients now, and you'll have commercials and advertising time. And now you can get prosperous. Amen. Glory to God. Hello, Charlotte. Hey. And Dale, y'all just traveling around and spreading the word of God and just on fire for the Lord. I'm following you. That was one beautiful hotel you guys was in. I don't know if you're on your honeymoon or what y'all up to, but God bless you down there in Australia. Amen. And Anna's down there, and uh, we just thank God for Anna and all the prayers. Oh, she is a prayer warrior. Amen. And she was in a tight little space, but she's coming out. God is using her. Amen. And uh, we thank God for her, and what a blessing she's been to me personally and this ministry. Amen. And Samanga, 
What a blessing you are to God's kingdom down there in Zambia, Africa. Amen. Y'all pray for her. She's got a Bible study going, and she wants she wants us to pray that the people will come with an open heart to receive God's word. And we know from this podcast, this word is power, all power. Amen. Hallelujah. And Deborah Atwell down there in the Bahamas on fire for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, keep her up in your prayers. Now, we go on to this prayer list. Amen. And I want you to pray for Anna, her son, Jacob, and her son's girlfriend, Maddie. She's having some issues in her body, health-wise. Amen. We just pray right now, complete healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And then we have Nick and Patricia. I promised I would tell you something about them. They have a prison ministry. They're going into men's prisons and women prisons uh, throughout Texas every day. Every day. What an anointed ministry looking for the lost and deliverance behind bars. And so just keep them lifted up in prayer. Amen. And they've invited me out. I wasn't going to tell y'all because, you know, some folks, it's just some nosy church folks. Amen. But (laughs) they've invited me out to come behind bars with them. I'm so excited. We're just trying to set this schedule. I'll let you know when I'm going because I won't be able to podcast, I don't think, uh, while I'm gone that week. Amen. But we're going to keep pumping out these podcasts podcast and hope to get way in front of you so that when we're gone for a few days ministering in this dark, sin-sick, broken world, amen, you'll still have plenty of material here to bless you, amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. I want you to lift up Laura Bowling. Laura Bowling. Amen. Coach Gecker and all his family and Dr. K, his wife, they're dear to me. That's my spiritual mentor. Every pastor need a pastor. We got to be ministered to as well. Amen. And Donna and her two sons. Boy, I can't wait to get her on this podcast and let her testify. You have no idea what this woman's gone through. No idea. But (laughs) she's still here, she's still going, and she's still believing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And pray for Sarah and Captain Haynes. Keep them lifted up. Anthony out in Atlanta. Rod. Now, see, I promised I'd tell you something about Rod. See, that's my play nephew. Now, he's going to get mad. He's going to get real mad. I was just talking to him. He going to call me back when he hear this and don't introduce me as your nephew, you know, but he's my producer too. Now I told you we had another podcast. Me and Rod were doing this for years. It's called the Bible study guide podcast. You can get it on any streaming service, iHeart, Spotify, Apple music, all of them. Just type in, Bible Study Guide Podcast, okay? And we're about to do another one, amen? And then I'm going to get him up here to make up for how I'm describing him because he'll tell you and say, I am not his producer. He is. He was for years, and he was getting this word of God out, and I didn't know how to do this. And he complimented me. I felt so good because he's like the producer. I'm just a preacher, a teacher. I sang on the praise team. I, I, You know what I mean? But he complimented me. He said, the light is good. The sound is great. He says, the material is off the chain. And he loves the little sound effects. So I felt good coming from him, a real producer, 
that we're doing a thing over here. Amen. And Rod's taking care of his 97-year-old grandma. Y'all just call her grandma. That's what I call. I call over there, morning, grandma. <laughs> Amen. 97 years old, still going strong. God is so good. Keep them lifted up in prayer. You got no idea what they're going through. Amen. Pastor Jody, she was a guest on this podcast, and we were a guest on her show, and she ministers to PTSD, depression, anxiety, like we do, but military. We want them all, military, police, fire, paramedics, you know what I'm saying? Anybody. Just being abused and going through abusive relationships will get you into those areas of PTSD and uh, depression and anxiety. Amen. So pray for Pastor Jordy and her ministry. And I really want you to pray hard on this one. And I ain't playing with y'all. I really need my prayer warriors out there to pray hard on this. You lift up Scott. Pastor Scott, you keep him lifted up in your prayer. And you pray for his wife, Carolyn. Oh, they're going through. Amen. They're going through. And you especially pray for their daughter, Sarah. You just keep Sarah lifted up. Precious child of God. You keep her lifted up. Keep all three of them lifted up. Amen. Keith and Jay Clark, Cheyenne. Amen. Keep Cheyenne lifted up. Helena Gore. Wow. Suffered so much loss. Amen. But still here. Still loving the Lord. Ladera. You have no idea what this woman's been through. You have no idea what Anna's been through. But you keep them lifted up in prayer. They're still here. They're still going strong. They refuse to give up on Jesus. Amen. But they need our prayers. Amen. Ashley, Lucia, God bless Lucia, and Sasha, God bless Sasha, and April, oh, my God, goodness, April and her children, Dominique Moore. Boy, this girl can sing. This girl can cook. She got some meatball rice and gravies from Mississippi style off the chain. Chicken pot pie, she down there clowning for the Lord. Amen. But bless her. She's an evangelist. Pray for her. Amen. And keep, I believe it's her brother Billy Moore lifted up. E S. The initials. E period. S period from YouTube. Asking for prayer. Amen. Keep him lifted up in prayer. Pray for Pastor Nelia. And uh, we got Charlene and Dale. We're done. Boy, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can I ask you all a question? Don't look at me like that. Just answer the question. Can I ask you guys a question? Are you ready for the word of God? <laughs> all right. Come on. We're going over to Hebrews chapter 12. Yes, I'm sure it's 12. I know I like to mess that up. Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 1. We've been talking about becoming one with Christ. He makes us holy. <laughs> when I look at my life, I'm like, I'm holy? <laughs> Me? Really? He does that. Okay, we're holy in God's sight. We're, we've been teaching and preaching and reading about living in the Spirit of God, becoming one with this Word, one with God's Holy Spirit living and dwelling inside of us. Jesus lives inside of us through His Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Father are one. They can't be separated. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God living in us. Wow! Are you getting this? You can't be in a better place. One. 
with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One with his Holy Spirit. One with this word, earthquake. You see the screen shake? Yeah. <laughs> and one with our Heavenly Father. Three yet one. <laughs> but he chose that his love is so great for us that he would live in us. Live in us. I mean, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. <laughs> Sometimes we can feel so broken or feel, feel that we've sinned so much that even God has given up on us. Our friends have, our families have. Amen. That church over there won't let us in. That church down the street on Elm and Oak, they won't let us in. We're not good enough for them. But guess what? <laughs> God loves us. And you couldn't have sinned too much that he won't take you in his arms and love you all the way to heaven. I was that bad. I really did believe. I had gotten past that point of no return with God. And he proved himself mighty in my life. Amen. And if he do it for me, truly, he'll do it for you. Amen. So we're going to Hebrews 12, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Now I have a asterisk there in the Greek or the uh, King James Version. It would read the originator and perfect factor of our faith. King Jesus, faith talking, water walking, demon stomping, King Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> Come on now. Let's go back over that because that's deliverance. That is deliverance. Dying to our self the sinful nature. Amen? The selfish nature. Those desires that can't serve God, those lifestyles that can't serve God. We're going to die to that. And he's going to live in us. And we're going to be all we can be for him and actually do the very purpose that he created us for. Okay? If you just surrender. Surrender it all to him. Let's read that again. Therefore, since, I'm starting at verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a hat or a chain you wear on Sunday and then you live like hell all week long. Uh -uh. That's not how we live in the spirit. That's not how we serve God. It's 24 7, 365. Amen. Why are you looking at me like that? You don't know what that means? It's all day, every day when you're alone. Nobody's around. No church folk. Just you and God. What are you doing then? Are you still living a life that pleases God? Amen. When no one else can see. It's a lifestyle. Amen? Total surrender, 100%. Anything that you feel that's in you, 
that can't serve God, you need to ask God. Take that from you. And he will. <laughs> That's just how loving he is. That is deliverance. So watch this. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down. That's like our slogan. Get the junk out of your trunk so you'll be light for the flight. Jesus is trying to take all of us higher in him so he can reveal to us. And he'll take us all the way up into heaven. Amen? He's not going to leave us. Okay? So uh, it says there, let us run with endurance. No, I want to go back. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down. That would slow, slow our rise in him. If you're trying to run a race and you've got all these burdens on you, these ankle weights and arm weights, and you got weights in your hand and weights and bricks strapped to your thighs, you're not going to be able to run. We got to let all this go, the pain, the hurt, the unforgiveness, the drugs, the alcohol, the sinful lifestyles, anything that is not of God, we got to let it go. And he will make that new creature out of us through his Holy Spirit. That's why we got to become one with the Spirit so we can be perfected by the Spirit. So it says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Boy, we, we can get tripped up by some sin, can't we? We run from sin when we're serving God. When you're truly running from the Lord, you ain't going to sin. Mm -mm. Because when those opportunities arise, when the devil whispers in your ear, you're not going to do it. You'll resist that devil because you're living for God. He's living in you. The Holy Ghost is going to say, uh-uh, don't do that. Don't go over there. Don't even think like that. You know what I'm saying? That's why we need that one this and, and we need his power working in us that we will not sin, that we will live holy, that we will give 100% in this walk. Amen? So, verse 2, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. How are you walking in the Spirit? Living in the Spirit is keeping your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your body thinking about Jesus. How are you going to sin thinking about Jesus? Come on now. <laughs> Not going to happen. Keep your mind on Jesus. And the Old Testament said, meditate on the word day and night. So, so why can't we do that now? Jesus is his word. What you read this morning before you raced off to work, contemplate on that all day. Every chance you get at the break room or at the water cooler, or at lunch. Amen. Meditate on it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <coughs> <coughs> we do this. Verse 2. We do what? We run the race with endurance. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith, or the originator and perfecter of our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. You didn't hear me. Let me say that again. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. What joy? I heard you out there. You act like I didn't hear you say that. What joy did Jesus get from dying on that cross? That you... And you, and you, and you. I see all y'all out there. And you, and you, and you, and you. And me. Could spend eternity with him in heaven. That's the joy. He saved us. That was his passion. To die for the law. To die for us. That we, who he loves more than anything in creation, We'll have eternity with him. Oh, come on. You act like he wasn't joyful. Watch this. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. I told you. 
You ain't in ministry if you ain't always coming back to this cross and the blood that Jesus shed for us. I don't see. I can't see. Now, y'all out there, y'all in a lot of different churches, religions, and ministry, tell me if a church is really a church of Jesus Christ that will not preach the cross or the blood, heaven, hell, judgment day. Amen. But I'm telling you, in this ministry, we are cross-centered, okay? It's at the cross of Jesus Christ that we are saved, healed, delivered, and set free, rendered heaven-bound in Jesus' name. It was his blood shed for us on Calvary that saves us and heals us and delivers us and covers us and shields and protects us, washes us, washes us, white as snow, all that sin gone, and renders us heaven bound in Jesus' name. Somebody went to heaven. They said, do you deserve to come in here? They said, no, nah, I'm under the blood, though. <laughs> I'm under the blood. You got to let me in. Do I deserve it? Nah. <laughs> Can't say that I do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Thinking of all the hostility he endured from sinful people, then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? Listen, we got a new one today. We're children. He calls us his children. <laughs> So we're holy, made right by God, holy in his sight, and he's calling us children. Come on now. Do you know who you are in Christ? Who is he to you and who are you to him? Are you with me? Come on now. It says here, verse 5, and have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, who said, God said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you for the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. When we get out of line, are we going to get spanked? Is it going to hurt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just say out. But it's out of his love for us that he corrects us, guides us, gets us back on track, and keeps us in his hand all the way up into heaven. Amen? As you endure, verse 7, as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as, as his own children. We're family, y'all. Huh? That makes all of us brothers and sisters, and God is our Father. Hallelujah. Come on. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Yeah, we meet a lot of people in church <laughs> out in these streets, and they real quick to say hallelujah. Hallelujah coming into your life. And then you got to call the police to get them out of your house. Amen? Wow. It's not the talk. It's a lifestyle. It's the walk. Walk this word. Become one with this word. One with God's Holy Spirit. He'll never fail you. And the power is in this word. Get this power in you. Why do you think the devil don't want this in you? Because then you'll be dangerous to him. You can undo his work. Are you with me? <laughs> Y'all just out there smiling and giggling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I want to skip ahead to verse 10 because we're running out of time and I want to give a little bit of my testimony. For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we may share in his holiness. Y'all act like we're not holy in his sight. I keep telling you all we are. We are. Now, it might take a spanking here and there from the Lord on your little pink bottom, but guess what? It's good for you. And it'll keep you his. Our challenge is to not get that spanking. Get this word in you. Make it a part of your life. Live this word. We want to be a walking example of the gospel. A walking, living, breathing gospel. Our lives lined up with this word. Amen? That's one with the Lord. One with this word. One with his spirit. Living in the spirit. All it takes, you act like it's hard. It's not hard. All it takes is surrender on our part. Lord, I give up. I can't fix it. I can't do it. I can't get rid of this pain. I can't get off these drugs. I can't put that bottle down. I can't stop doing what I'm doing, but I know it doesn't please you. Help me, Lord. Shape me, form me, mold me, make me into what you want me to be. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So it says, but God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. And that's something about parents. They be beating the snot out of you, talking about this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Well, I don't see you crying. <laughs> I'm the one in tears. Amen. But it is that way with God. He doesn't look for opportunities to beat the snot out of us. Amen. And when I look back to God's discipline in my life, especially when I first got out of hell, yeah, I was stumbling. I was making mistakes. I didn't have this walk down. Okay. But he guides you. It's like that shepherd's staff, a couple of touches on the side to keep you in line, keep you in the fold. It's gentle. Amen? Now, if you're going to buck against him and not get back in line, yeah, you might get smacked in the head with that staff. That's what we're talking about here. You don't have to do that. Don't rebel against him. Live for him. Be humble before him. It's okay that you're broken. It's okay that you're hurt. It's okay that you're in pain. It's okay that you're sick. He's going to fix all that. He's not worried about that. He's trying to save your soul. He's trying to get you to live for him. And in order to live for God, you got to live by this word. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. I tell you that all the time. Read your word. How are you going to be what you don't know? Amen? Read this word. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We've got a few minutes left. I said we got a few minutes left. We got so excited in that word, we didn't stop. I was going to read the whole chapter, but then we wouldn't uh, have enough time to talk about my childhood. Now, as you know, I'm in high school now. All my mother has for me is hateful looks but not a word. The entire time I was in high school, she never spoke a word to me. Now I'm playing football. I'm playing baseball. I got some new friends. New friends. One lives right around the corner from me. I can ride my bike and be there in five minutes. That was Wendell. Amen. And he knew some girls. <laughs> oh, you y'all act like Wendell didn't know no girls. He knew some girls in the neighborhood, amen? And, uh, ooh, we had some fine girls in our neighborhood. There was a girl from our high school, lived closer than he did, right around the corner, okay? Her daddy, I'm not going to tell you her name because then y'all going to be all over me, but her daddy 
was a captain in the uh, L.A. Fire Department. Amen. Now she knows who I'm talking about. Amen. And I told her this at the uh, high school reunion. But I used to derive, oh, that girl was so fine. You ain't seen fine till you seen her. And I'm riding my bike, and she'd always be standing in the window looking out. And here I come on my bike with my goofy self, and I'm just a waving and almost falling because I only got one hand on the bike, right? And she would sit there and look at me and shake her head, and I would signal, come outside, let's play. <laughs> and then play with a girl, you know, come outside and play. What y'all be doing? She ain't coming out. She ain't thinking about me. So I'd ride on down the window side. Amen. But Ed Potter was a good friend. He was big. We called him Big Head Ed. <laughs> Brilliant. Very smart man. He taught me a lot on how to analyze and get stuff done. Amen. We used to call him Bomar Brain because he could always figure out stuff and get that answer real quick. That shaped a lot of my life. I wish I'd have hung on to it more and wouldn't have got lost. But he used to keep the bullies off of me. People wanted to pick on me, and he'd come over. He'd say, nah, not today. <laughs> you know what I mean? And keep me, uh, keep me safe. He looked out for me. You know, he was a great friend, you know, in high school. And so uh, it was Greg Malone. He had the girls. And, you know, we never got anywhere close to girls. We all were panting. <laughs> we all wanted a girlfriend. We're 15, 16, 17. I've had one kiss in my life. And I can't tell anybody because it was in Camarillo State Hospital. And that one sent me to my knees. I can't wait till the next one, you know. But there ain't a girl in Luton High thinking about kissing me, okay? So not happening. So we concentrated on our work. We concentrated on sports, kind of. You know what I wish? Coach Randy Lowe was an awesome, awesome. Baseball coach. Amen. And Sam Knight, good friend. Still know him today. Oh, I mean, he loves the law. Okay, he played first base when I would pitch. I forget where he went when I would play first base. I hated first base. I love pitching, but you can't pitch every game. They wanted to keep me playing. So I think he went to the outfield. But we had a great team. Okay, and Coach Lowe worked us hard. I wish I'd have grasped on to his teaching, what he was teaching us. He wanted heart. He wanted us to give that 100% like we're doing now for the Lord. If I'd have done that in sports, I might have made it professional. I don't know. But see, I didn't. The only reason I was involved in sports is because I didn't want to go home. By going to practice every day, football and baseball, I wouldn't get home until late, right around dinner time, when Dad was already there. That way I wouldn't be in that house alone with my mother. Oh, I knew what I was doing. I'm getting older now. You know what I mean? But that hate is still in here. And I'm not sure what I'll do if she does come after me. I mean, I know I'm going to kill her. But how? The hatred was there. That murderous heart was in me. Oh, that woman was dead. It was just when, where, and how. I used to watch Columbo. Y'all don't know nothing about that. It was a detective show. And he would always solve the case. But I'm watching this show trying to figure out how can I do the perfect murder and not have to go to prison. How can I take this witch off this planet and not have to serve time? You see? And I haven't figured that out yet, and I can't let my friends know what's really going on at the house, so it's like a secret. But it's boiling and 
festering in me like a cancer. And it makes you evil. It makes you evil. And some of you out there can identify with what I'm talking about. You felt what I felt. You've been there. Amen. You've been through these abusive relationships and found yourself trapped. You can't get out, you know. So I'm just being honest with y'all. I was a mess. I was a wreck. We didn't do drugs. We were good Lutheran high school kids. Now, you know, I went to the uh, uh, class reunion and found out half the football team was smoking weed before the game. I didn't even know. My buddy, Daryl Felix and Alan Felix, he said, Carsevina Gates, yeah, Ray Cobb, them was some bad boys. You didn't want to line up against them, not even in practice. You would get hurt. Okay? Marvin Coffey. He was a fullback. He made all state. We call him Tasmanian devil. In practice, <laughs> he would come around my side. I'm playing defensive end or defensive tackle. He would come around my side. I would just wave him through. I'm not trying to tackle you. You are not going to break me up. He didn't dance around a lot. He didn't have him sweet moves. You know what I'm saying? He ran you over and killed you <laughs> like a freight train, like a steamroller. And he was unstoppable. And he would break up half our team in practice. Monster. So we had some bad boys on our teams and some great coaching. Jim Young. Oh, man. He is ministering now. You, I'll have to put something on my Facebook page. From Coach, you know Coach Gecker, okay? Hopefully, you can find him on uh, uh, Facebook, Lowell Gecker. He's always pouring it out, how to live for Christ, how to handle these times, what's going on, and biblically, the answer, you know? But Jim Young, wow, he's on fire for the Lord. Now, he was a back coach, you know, backfield for uh, offense. Okay, so he was busting clipboards on their heads, not mine. I didn't have to deal with him, thank God, because he was a big old brother. And I mean, he was thick, and he was muscular, and he didn't play. <laughs> okay? He didn't play. So high school, I was hiding. I had this raging fire of hate inside. I couldn't share it in, with anyone at Lutheran High School because these are good kids. <laughs> I'd never met good kids. I'd met crazy kids. I'd met murderous kids. <laughs> but I hadn't met good kids. But now I'm surrounded by good kids. But yet deep inside I'm a wreck. I remember after practice sometimes in the shower I would cry. In the shower, they never knew I was crying. What you crying for? I hear y'all asking. What were you crying for? Because I'm hearing them in the locker room talking about what mom made for dinner. They made their favorite. You can have a favorite? There was none of that going on in our house. How their dad came to the game last week and told them, wow, you're really coming along. Come on, we're going to the bat batting cage or let's throw some uh, uh, passes. Their parents were in their lives and there was love there. There was love. There was acceptance. There was encouragement. Their parents would come to the events at the school. I didn't have that. And their stories excited me. To this day, I love hearing children talk about their parents or parents talking about their kids, the love, 
the holidays, the games they'd play at Christmas. I'm like, you don't play games? What kind of game? Tell me about the game. We had none of it. The, the house I was in was a house with no love, period, ever, for any reason. No encouragement, no hugs, no kitten, no, nothing. My dad never came to four years of football and baseball I played. He didn't come to one game, and he's the only one in the house to come. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. But I would feed off their family, their memory, their excitement of what's going to happen this weekend. They had birthday parties. I'd never had a birthday party. Never. What do you do? And they're talking about that they did this and they went there and their friends came over and some magician came over or a clown or they went horseback riding. And I'm like, wow. So I'm living their lives through their stories. And it was heartbreaking that I couldn't share in that, that I couldn't have that, that I was so hated, uh, so unacceptable, so thrown away, so abandoned in my situation. I used to live through theirs to get that joy, to get that. And sometimes their stories would be so beautiful. They hugged their grandma. I didn't even know my grandma. They hugged their grandma and held on. And I'm hearing it. And it's like, there is love out there. As far as I knew, everybody was going through what I'm going through. When I hear their stories, I'm like, wow, there's a real world of love out there. I want that. I want that. Amen. But <laughs> never got it. But do you know where I found love greater than family? Family ain't all it's cracked up to be. They say blood sticking in water. Where? <laughs> I meet so, I meet so many people from broken families, broken homes. Where is this happening where blood sticking in water? Where you're gonna stand by me? I'm not seeing it. I'm not feeling it. Amen? And it seems today it's even worse than yesterday. But you want to know where I found love? Acceptance. Encouragement. <laughs> Church family. Through Christ. My heavenly father. I don't even know who my earthly father is. I found my mother. We'll talk about that on the on another podcast. I don't know who my earthly daddy is. But I know who my heavenly father is. And he broke laws of gravity to save me. He brought me out of hell. Okay. Now that's love. He went to that cross. And died the most horrible, 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 horrible death and suffered suffered so horribly for me and you. But I'm saying, Father's Day come, I'm worshiping him because I don't care who this earthly father is or about his love. I don't even know if he's alive. If he had a love for me, I never felt it, but I sure feel he is love. That love. Wow. Come on now. The love of God, that's good enough for me. And I declare right now, here today, having never known my real earthly mom, she died before I found out who she was. Bless her heart. She wouldn't have liked me. I'm glad the Lord hid me from her. You know, I would have broke her heart, the mess I was in. But I got a heavenly father that loves me more than he does his own creation, his universe. 
He loves me more than a planet, more than a star. I'll take that. And he placed me in a body of Christ. I'm here now. I'm not telling you where. We've got to put some time in between before I share this good news, this testimony that I'm sitting on now that's boiling up inside me, and I just want to shout and share it with you. You can't have this yet. Not yet. Not yet. We got a few things that we're working out. And I wrote a long list to hand in, and I'm going to see this beautiful body of Christ this afternoon. And I'm going to hand in this list. And this list is going to help with the decision-making of a, an important point. And they're writing a list, and then we're going to find which one we like the best. Now, you're trying to figure out what I'm talking about. Stop it. You can't figure out what I'm talking about because I'm not going to let you. But I'm planting this seed, so you'll be wondering about this. And so when I release this testimony, you're going to be like, that's what he was talking about. I knew it. <laughs> but I found love in the body of Christ. If you're looking for love, if you're lonely, if you're trying to get out of that dark place, get yourself in church. Amen. Come on, let's pray it out. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for keeping us in it. I thank you for everyone that you drew into the knowledge of this ministry, brought here today, and I pray for each and every one of them. Each and every one of them, Father. By the anointing that you placed upon myself and upon this ministry, I speak healing power from heaven right now right now through this podcast, into each and every one of their lives. Save every one of them. Heal their bodies, minds, hearts, souls, spirits. Deliver them and set them free from all that the enemy has upon them, Lord. Break every yoke. Tear down every stronghold. Loose every chain. Open up those prison doors for those in the darkness. Set your people free, Lord. Free from the bondage that the enemy has had on them. This yoke-breaking power, Lord. Release it right now to each and every one of their lives. And render each one under the sound of my voice, heaven-bound, in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, y'all. We'll be back. But until we do, can I just ask you to do this? Have a wonderful, a glorious, a beautiful, a magnificent day in Christ Jesus. Unless you've already made other plans.